Well, you might call it the year user-generated content became synonymous with one catch word. I report. Yes, hundreds of thousands of you submitted news that you caught on camera this year to iReport.com. Yeah, from issue number one to extreme weather, international conflicts, and much, much more, this is iReport 2008, caught on camera. And hello, everybody. I'm TJ Holmes. Hello, I'm Betting Wing, and we do want to begin with the biggest story of the year, America Votes 2008. Yeah, no matter who you voted for in the presidential election, 11 p.m. Eastern, November 4th, 2008, will go down as one of the biggest moments in American history. And CNN can now project that Barack Obama, 47 years old, will become the president-elect of the United States. From Chicago's Grant Park to Harlem to Sierra Leone, Africa to Times Square to San Francisco, California to Italy to Antarctica to New York's Union Square. Thousands gathered, including first-time Eye reporter David Massenheimer, who captured the historic crowd spontaneously erupt into an emotional rendition of the national anthem. I, I knew it was special as it was happening. I was sort of giggling inside. Oh my God, I got this from the beginning. Capturing a piece of history in your own way, and that's what people wanted it to be. They wanted it to be personal, and by having their own cameras, they made it that. But This was the first election ever where eye reporters around the world were able to directly ask candidates anything that was on his or her mind. Eye reporter Jimmy Deal from Canada got the chance to do just that. I asked Barack Obama the most important question that he would have to contemplate before the election. And that question is, who is going to be his vice president nominee? I prepare a lot of questions for all of our newsmakers, and I prepare a lot uh, uh, going into these major interviews. But I got to tell you, every time we've solicited I report questions, it's made the interview a lot better. 16-year-old veteran eye reporter Trevor Doherty documented his own piece of history after snaking his way to the front of the stage at the Democratic National Convention. Uh, this is Trevor from the Democratic National Convention. Uh, I saw a security guy going through, going towards the stage, so I just got behind him and followed him as he uh, weaved through. So I ended up being right with the rest of the press corps touching the stage. At Invesco Field, Trevor asked CNN's Anderson Cooper his thoughts on citizen journalism. What do you think of citizen journalism and how it's changing CNN and politics and journalism in general? Uh, well, someone who started as a citizen journalist, I'm, I'm all for it. On election day, Americans turned out in record numbers to vote for their new president. Even Mickey and Minnie Mouse got in on the action. Then they turned to CNN's iReport to share their experiences with the world. On election day, iReport.com received the most amount of reports it has ever received in one day. From around the country, iReporters flooded the website with pics and video documenting their experiences. Five people in line at five o'clock in the morning. The polls are open for another what, two hours? Mm -hmm. 15 minutes to seven, and we have been here for several hours. So I'm done. I'm finished. I voted for my candidate. Man, this feels great. I love voting. We have never been just a collection of individuals for a collection of red states and blue states. We are and always will be the United States of America. Of course, the right to assemble peacefully is protected under the U.S. Constitution. But during the past election, hundreds of thousands chose to exercise that right to have their views and concerns heard. Often, the peaceful protests turned chaotic, and CNN Eye reporters were witnesses to the action. From Democrats in Denver, Colorado, <laughs> to Republicans in St. Paul, Minnesota, Faithful party members came out to nominate their presidential pick. If you put my baby in danger, you're going to have to account to me. And
and so did protesters who wanted their voices heard just as loud, if not louder. <laughs> Protests usually start peaceful and nonviolent, but sometimes splinter out of control when rogue groups break off on their own agenda. There were approximately 150 arrests made in Denver and over 700 arrests made in St. Paul where CNN I reporters were on the scene to capture every rant. This is our flag! This is our country! Brave. And request. What do we want? Yeah. When do we want it? Yeah. <laughs> I reporter Corinne McDermott from the citizen journalist website uptake.org found herself in the middle of a police standoff on the streets of St. Paul, Minnesota. Corinne was there when cops opened fire and tear gas filled the air. Wow. I can't believe this is happening. I can't believe that this level of uh, of, of response and police uh, tactics is actually going on. I can't believe I actually caught this. We're always going to have reporters, we're always going to send our crews uh, to, to a story, but to have people who are there uh, with the presence of mind to, to point their cameras and to, to start taking pictures, to start sending those images, uh, to start telling the stories that they are seeing all around them or their own stories is, uh, I think it's an important thing. So important that 17-year-old I reporter Dean Lawrence began filming while being pushed back by Nassau County Mounted Police at the final presidential debate at Hofstra University on Long Island. <laughs> Members of the group Iraq Veterans Against the War demanded access to the debate and to have their concerns heard. The crowd was getting a little unruly. Uh, there were people yelling, people fighting with the police officers. There were some incidents um, where they had mounted police on horses and people were sort of getting thrown around by them. Uh, so it was scary, but it was also exciting just to be in that atmosphere where so many people were so passionate about the election. The election results brought some controversy as well, especially in California on Proposition 8. Voters in California passed Prop 8, which essentially banned gay marriage in the state that had just legalized it. Yeah, and the feedback was fierce. I reports quickly piled in, both sides drawing lines in the sand. Proposition 8, a ballot measure which would amend the California state constitution to define marriage as a union between one man and one woman only, has been passed by the voters of California. And Californians spoke out passionately on both sides of the issue. Why are you out here right now? <laughs> to support traditional marriage uh -huh. and my family. Uh -huh. That's it. man and man. We believe in mom and dad. We have used our reporters in many ways and our network, we have benefited from it as journalists and I think we have benefited from it as Americans because we get to see it the way people see it, not the way the media wants to portray it. And we see our reports on just about every big story that's out there. But there is just one story, only one, that is impacting every single American. Issue number one, America's economy front and center this year and likely to stay in the spotlight for some time to come. Yeah, we're talking about bailouts, we're talking buyouts, mergers, meltdowns, and of course, America's fuel crisis. CNN's money team was all over it and so were our eye reporters.
It's the story consuming a nation because everyone in the United States is part of it. Issue number one, the economy. I think we're, it's going to take a lot of time for us to come back and um, actually rebuild what has been torn down. It all started with the American dream, gone bad. Countless bad loans led to the mortgage meltdown. As loans failed, credit tightened. As credit tightened, banks began to fail. Folks are worried, concerned that their money's gonna, not going to be there when they need it. And then, after the stunning collapse of Lehman Brothers, perhaps one of the most controversial stories of 2009, the $700 billion bailout of struggling financial institutions. You know, a lot of people angry about the bailout, angry about where their money was going, their taxpayer money was going, wondering why some people were being bailed out and not others. No more credit, no more bailouts. But the bailout talk didn't end there. Next stop, Detroit. If we let the auto industries go under, there goes our economy. All of this leaving more and more Americans, nearly 7%, out of work and desperate for answers. Let's go to the phones. Uh, Jackie in Allentown, Pennsylvania. Hi, Jackie. What's your question? Hi, my question is, um, my hus I bought a house and my husband lost his job about seven, eight months ago. And it's very hard for us to pay the bills because we're going down on the mortgage. When you actually hear someone's voice or see their face and you understand they're not asking you a general question about the economy. They are giving you their desperation. If we can actually help individuals with their problems, other individuals will, will find help in that same problem. But the hottest topic for everyday Americans took place during the heat of the summer. Gas prices above four bucks a gallon. Now look where we are, 141.71 is where oil uh, hit just this morning. I reporters captured the frustration. People are waiting in line, some as much as 45 minutes to an hour to get gas for 379. One person I talked to said, um, it was, you know, half of their paycheck went to gas for their car. So you think, well, what, what did the other half go to? And you know, once you pay all the bills, what's left? <laughs> and as you can see, no gas at these pumps as well. When the gas prices were shooting up, uh, people would kind of fill up, you know, anticipation that it's going to go up higher tomorrow or the next week. All of a sudden, several gas stations, as I was passing by, when I needed gas, didn't have gas. I'm like, what is going on? When people hear there are shortages and when it goes out over the, the airwaves that there's a shortage of something, including gas, that gets people panicked. Well, high gas prices were tough to swallow, but sometimes humor <laughs> is just what we need. Hey, you got to laugh to keep them crying That's sometimes. That's true. Check it out. I think for all of history, songs and jokes uh, are ways of dealing with tough times. I know this may sound funny, I can't believe it's true. The politicians tell us there's little we can do. I think it's how people share and it's how people feel a little stronger. You give people a camera in a crisis and they commiserate, but they're also getting really creative. Well, we got pain at the pump. They think that we're all chumps. They're playing games with the price of crude. They're not just pumping oil, they're drilling me and you. The big man's getting rich, and the little man's getting screwed. I mean, how many times can you go on TV and talk about gas prices are up, gas prices are up? All we got paid at the pump. My wallet's in a slump. It makes it so much easier to illustrate the story when you've got these little ditties that people are putting together. Well, raise it up to four, and they're going to lower it down to two. And we're not stupid. We know what they're doing. Well, I'm not sure who's to blame. But if we ever met, well, I'd wrap this rubber hose around their greedy necks. All right, we got three words for you now. The first one, we got hurricanes. Next, we got wildfires. Last but not least, we've got floods. Eye reporters taking you to the front lines. 